Welcome to the part 3 of our multi-part tutorial based on Indigino Technologies dataset. Previously we create a data model, various tables using DAX, and two dashboards, using the Indigino Technologies transactions data. Today we will create this Gantt chart, to view and monitor progress of purchase, delivery, installation, and sales, of various products, selected using slicers above especially the product still in process of being handed over to the buyer. This Gantt chart will show us how much progress has been made and which task is completed or in process. With exact percentage of progress. In this tutorial you will learn many advanced tricks. To keep the video short, it has been fast forwarded in many places. Please pause the video to see the formulas and other steps clearly. We must have task, start date, and end date column in our flow table. For that, we need to have all those columns in these four flow tables. So, in the first table, let's add a column named task, with static string purchase. This entire table, represents the purchase task. This task starts, when an order is placed. So the start date will be the order date, from the orders table. As usual, we will use the related function, to get the order date, from the order table. Because the tables are connected through a relationship. The task ends when the product ordered is purchased. So the purchase date of the product, will be the end date of this purchase task. We will get the purchase date from the purchases table using the related function. And now we have all columns that we need in our first table. Now we have error in the combined table, because tables are not identical now. Let's add these columns to the other tables as well. Let's add a task column, with delivery as static string, which represents task in this table. The delivery task starts, with the end of previous task, which is purchase, to the start date is purchase date from purchases table. And the end date of delivery task, is the date of product delivery, from the delivery table. Again, we will use the related function. In the next table, we will again add a task column. Here, the task is installation. The installation process can only start, when the product is delivered. Therefore, the delivery date will become the start date of this task. The task will end with the installation or setting up of the product. Therefore, the end date will be the installation date from the installation table. The task in our final table is sale. After delivery of a product, the sale is completed after some quality checks, customer feedback, payments and other stuff. The start date of this task is the end date of installation task. And the end date of the sale task is the sales date from the sales table. And as soon as all the tables become identical, the combined flow table no longer shows an error. All three columns we just added in those four tables are available here as well. We will also add two columns for progress. One will show the progress of current task, while the other will show the total progress from sales progress. The total progress will be same for all tables, and will be used later to filter sales currently in process. While the individual progress of each task, will show their own percentage of completion in the dashboard. Both columns are now available in the combined table now. Based on the total progress column in each table, we can add an overall status column, returning values of either complete, or in process. If the total progress is 1, the value returned will be complete, otherwise the column will say in process. We will add this column to all four tables, after which this column will be available in the combined table as well. Currently progress is displaying as whole number either 0 or 1. We need to go to the query editor, and change all progress columns to decimal, from whole numbers. This change of data type is necessary to display the accurate percentages in the progress columns. Otherwise they will just show 0 or 1. 
After changing all data types of progress columns to decimal, we will apply these changes and close the query editor. Then we will go to the table view and change data types of all these columns to decimal there as well. In the report view, we already have two dashboards. Before creating another one, let's add a Gantt chart to our custom visuals. You can get one from the internet. We will add this custom visual from a file. It is now available in our visuals on the build pane. Now let's create another dashboard by copying title and slicers from our existing dashboards. Paste these copied visuals on a new page and click on the sync button. Now, we will copy these five slicers as well from this dashboard and paste them on the new page. And click on the sync button as well. Now, we will display the format pane and change all these slicers into drop down from slicer settings. We can now reduce their size. This will give us enough space to place a Gantt chart here. We will add the Gantt chart now and place it in the empty area on the dashboard. We will use all columns we added in today's tutorial such as task, start date, end date, progress in this Gantt chart. First of all, we will add the task field to the task. Now we have all four tasks, purchase, delivery, installation, and sale in our Gantt chart. We will add the product ID field to the parent to show product wise information. Now we will add the start date field to the start date and the end date field to the end date. In the percent completion, we will add the progress field. We can add another slicer here. Remember, we created a status field which tells us if the sales process is complete or in process. That is very important field using which we can add a slicer to shortlist and monitor all those jobs which are still in process. We can copy an existing slicer and replace its field with the status field from the flow table. Now we can just select in process tasks and monitor them in our Gantt chart. Now we must also add visual borders and rounded corners to our Gantt chart to make it visually attractive and symmetrical to other visuals. Our dashboard is now ready. On the Gantt chart, we can monitor the progress of each task and see its actual progress in percentage. We can also use the slicers above to shortlist and view products in the Gantt chart. Thanks for watching. We hope you liked our tutorial. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more insightful tutorials and updates.